everyone. We are down to the last two content sessions and then there's a really fun closing ceremony. I wanna welcome everyone to today's uh, session, Why Hyperion Exists. Uh, my name, uh, Tracy McMullen uh, with Interval Consulting. Uh, I've been with Interval now 15 years, which seems like a really long time. Uh, former Oracle ACE director, now I'm in alumni status, I, I officially retired. Um, personally, uh, wife and mom of two teenage girls, um, I'm a CrossFitter, although I'm not one of the crazy strong CrossFitters, but I enjoy that. Um, and I love to read, but my brain is usually really tired after work, um, so I read a lot of non-thinking, you know, definitely beach type read books. Uh, again, quick note on NRL. Uh, hopefully you guys are familiar with Interrail now after Solutions Conference, um, but we have a, a number of webcasts coming up, so kind of the knowledge is going to just keep on coming because it's our goal to make the world a smarter place. If you guys need any assistance with anything, we would love to help you. I am speaking with and so excited to be speaking with Tony. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hey everybody. Thanks, Tracy. Uh, I'm Tony Scalise, and so I have been in the Oracle EPM space for a long time now. I just looked at 2000 and realized that that's now 20 years. Uh, prior to my current experience, I was in professional services, also known as consulting for 13 years, um, but now I'm the chief customer officer at OneCloud. So really excited to be here. Um, I'm an Oracle Ace director currently. Uh, hopefully I can maintain that. Um, and I've done some authorship. Uh, I blog and I tweet occasionally, not as much. Um, if you're on the Oracle or on the One Cloud blog, uh, a lot of the stuff you see there, uh, I've actually authored a bit of it. Uh, on the personal front, I'm a husband and proud dad. So I, I almost said proud husband and dad, but then that kind of sends this message. <laughs> stories. Like, am I proud that somebody actually will put up with me? Like, how does that go? Uh, I like running. And uh, I'm an avid foodie and good one. And I'm also a storyteller. So the, the story around the fun fact here is I was supposed to come up with a bio, which I realized when I looked at the sessions that I failed to do that. Apologies. Um, but I told this story to Tracy, and I think it was Ellie, that I'm kind of an enigma. I love chocolate, but I hate chocolate ice cream. I love fresh fruit, but I refuse to eat baked fruit. So like apple pie is disgusting, except blueberries, which I will only eat a blueberry muffin, but I won't eat fresh blueberries. And so my poor wife has had to learn these things over the years. And so that's a little bit of a fun fact about me. Awesome. Um, so a little bit about OneCloud. Uh, so for those of you that aren't familiar with OneCloud, I know that some customers have talked about it over the course of the week, which is great. Uh, we love to hear our customers being excited about our technology and, and sharing it with the world. But we're an iPaaS technology, which is an integration platform as a service. Uh, different than traditional iPaaS in the sense that we're built for the business user. So if we think about in the Oracle EPM space, FDMEE prior to the cloud, cloud data management, those applications and what they started to give people, we've really taken that and sought to elevate that and really make that a much more business friendly application, um, kind of a no code environment. So, and it gives us that ability to connect on-premises systems to cloud-based systems. And again, we don't have to worry about writing code to do that. So uh, that would be us at OneCloud. All right, so the, the presentation and actually was, was Tony's idea and I thought it was a really good one um, because this, this, you would think by now we kind of answered this question, but it still continues to come up is what is EPM? Why do I need EPM? Um, you know, and again, you know, what is Hyperion? Why did, why do we need Hyperion? Um, and it really all comes from um, some of the challenges and the perceptions that, oh, wait, I can do all of this in my ERP system, but you can't, right? You've got uh, data in a whole host of systems um, across your organization. Not all of the data is in the ERP system. Uh, a number of those solutions are both on-premise. Uh, some of them now may be in the cloud. And so it makes it very difficult to report and analyze. Uh, just make sure I see a chat coming through. No technical issues, right? We're okay. You're good. You're good, okay, Tracy. Great. Thank you. Uh, so difficult to report um, and analyze information across systems. Um, and then oftentimes kind of the support um, of these solutions, very IT intensive um, developers, 
So then ultimately what ends up happening is business users, finance users um, result to Excel. We get a lot of Excel um, <laughs> trying to trying to uh, bridge the gaps um, because we, we don't have the solution in place. So we don't have um, you know, the ability to tie operational reporting with our financial plans and reports. We really don't have any insight because we're spending all of our time trying to get all of the data from all these different systems um, you know, into a place where I can just report and look at it um, and then not really spending any time on then looking to the future. Um, oftentimes by the time I get all of this information together, um, it's out of date. And so, um, you know, I, I'm making decisions, um, you know, on data that's not timely. Um, and I really can't can't take some, some value add actions. So those are some of the challenges um, that many customers were facing um, when Hyperion came into being um, and are actually still facing today. So, so what is Hyperion? Um, I pulled one of our original slides, um, you know, uh, back a few years, Hyperion was the original EPM, um, Enterprise Performance Management, Business Performance Management, had a number of different acronyms, but because um, Hyperion was kind of the company that originated pulling together closing consolidation solutions, forecasting, uh, planning solutions, reporting and analysis. You know, Hyperion originally was the, the company that brought all of that together. Um, and then Oracle purchased that solution. We learned that uh, today in the, uh, uh, in, the, in the keynote. Um, so Hyperion was really, and when we say Hyperion, and honestly, we still have customers today that they, even though they're in the Oracle EPM cloud, they still call it Hyperion. Um, so I know Oracle's trying to kind of move away from it, but but um, you know, it's it's legacy because it has been such a powerful solution for us, um, continues, hence the name of this conference. Um, so why Hyperion exists, why EPM exists, um, is really tying in those elements, um, you know, for a comprehensive solution so that we can report, analyze, forecast information to improve upon our business, taking data from a number of those different sources and, and making it meaningful. Um, so within Hyperion, what, what, what's part of that or within EPM, we were talking about data governance and having central hierarchies. Um, we need to all be able to speak the same language. And again, oftentimes when we have different systems, um, there could be different coding uh, systems. We've heard that from a couple of customers who've presented um, this uh, this week, you know that that's one of their challenges. Different systems use different ways of identifying products, customers, um, you know, accounts, and so having a data data governance structure to kind of marry all that together so that you can report and analyze against all of those different systems. Being able to scenario plan, um, forecast, and, and model your data, so you want to um, be looking forward, looking to the future. Um, in order to do that, we need to be able to, to uh, consolidate our actuals, close the books very quickly so that we can get the up-to-date information so we can really you know, make decisions and be proactive versus reactive. Um, we want to automate where we can, and that's where reconciliations come into play. So there's a supportive tool to help with that. Profitability and cost management. Um, so again, uh, I, we'll talk in a little bit more detail about this need, but kind of the ability to, um, to not only understand our costs, but being able to understand our profitability and take some of our shared services costs, our support costs um, of the organization that are really supporting a number of different efforts and initiatives, and then, you know, turn around and allocate those back to revenue facing, um, revenue generating centers so that we can understand profitability. And then just be able to report all the information. So kind of that cycle of we need to take data from all of these different systems. We need to turn it into meaningful information so that we can gain insights, so we can take action, so we can improve business. And this is really the, 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 the central solution, the central definition of why Hyperion exists. So from a definition perspective, <clears throat> and I love my, my, my table and, I, and oftentimes I still share this table today or the slide today with customers who are trying to understand, um, they're doing a lot of stuff in the ERP and they're, they're, they're asking, well, why can't we just do this in um, Fusion Cloud or EBS, why, why can't we do that? You know, your ERP system was really designed uh, for day-to-day -day transactions. It's to, to run the business on a daily basis. Um, and you, this is your solution that's, you know, your SAP, your Fusion, your EBS, or PeopleSoft. Uh, from an EPM or Hyperion standpoint, this is where we really are using to um, kind of collect, analyze, understand, and report on the, 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 the enterprise, be able to manage our business, and, and, and again, provide insights. 
Um, so, so those are the kind of the two different paradigms that we're, you know, kind of comparing. And then again, what we've heard from Oracle is kind of the new direction in this new exciting, um, you know, kind of direction forward called intelligent performance management, which is where um, I now don't actually have to run the reconciliation process. I don't have to create the reports. If I'm wanting to forecast out, the computers are going to be able to do it for me, right? So we're seeing glimpses of that. We're seeing um, uh, new features in the tool today um, that's starting this intelligence performance management effort, and then we're just going to see that continue on. And um, Tracy, mm -hmm. if I could just add a little something into this. Of course. Another reason that we see this paradigm is that the difference in these systems, right? ERPs, big, powerful, clunky, right? They're slow to be able to change because there's a bunch of connected stuff to that. Right? If I'm sitting in an, an industry that's validated and particularly around life sciences, and I used to work for Boston Scientific, you had the FDA coming in and looking at things that were happening that were connected to your ERP. Right? You had to prove that those things were, were bulletproof. EPM can respond to the, uh, the quick changes that are happening in the business. COVID-19 is, is the most obvious one, but mergers and acquisitions, right? Reorganizations because management is now managing the business differently. Those things, that's why EPM also exists because you can't do that in an ERP in the timely fashion that you need to because of all the other processes that it supports. Definitely. Okay, so continuing on that, um, you know, EPM expanded, understanding, analyzing, reporting the database. The other kind of key point that I want to um, make sure that that's part of this EPM solution, part of this Hyperion solution, no SQL, no IT skill sets. Um, the goal is to have kind of business uh, driven applications, business reported applications. You guys understand the business, the hierarchies, those pieces. You guys are the, the ones that are kind of running these solutions. And then as Tony mentioned, um, really building fast solutions, very agile solutions that can support all levels of users. Now we also want to have drawback capabilities into the ERP so that we can interact um, and, and see that information, but again, providing a, a whole other solution to, to meet requirements. So part of the part of the Hyperion um, solution and, and why you need it um, is kind of to, to really um, move towards a state of data governance. Um, and so sometimes we, we encourage customers, you're gonna have a data governance mini revolution, right? And try and go from black box IT controlled products um, or and or maintaining your hierarchies in your ERP, your ERP is not really designed to maintain hierarchies um, into a business user controlled solution. Um, so using enterprise data management to manage your hierarchies, kind of be agnostic to any of the solutions that it's doing. And then what's great is you can build in within EDM, um, and we did this with DRM as well, but EDM is kind of the direction forward from a cloud perspective, building in derived properties, building in automations um, so that ultimately you, we kind of get to an exception-based data governance standpoint. Um, and then we definitely want to make sure we have um, workflow and collaboration supporting the, the processes. Um, so again, we want to have all of the data and metadata synchronized. Um, so we don't, we want everybody reporting on the same numbers, everybody in agreement. Um, and if we don't have those checks in place, um, if we don't have good data integrity, data governance over the structures, um, that's where we start to have issues. So like if you've got garbage in, there's going to be garbage coming out. So part of this data governance and using EDM, um, using one cloud to help kind of integrate and all the data together um, is an important element of, of Hyperion or EPM. Another part of Hyperion and EPM is, is the planning and forecasting. And so, um, you know, th these are different screenshots and elements of, of all of the things that you want to have in a, a planning and forecasting solution. So you want to be able to do those strategic plans. You see the, the um, the, the, the guy championing the top of the mountain, looking over the clouds. So kind of the, the strategy planning, the, the top-down planning, but then be able to communicate that down to users and have users kind of meet you from a bottoms-up perspective. Um, we mentioned, you know, these, these solutions have to be very agile. Um, so I wish I could do a back bend like that. I could 
maybe get halfway up. Uh, we want our, our planning solutions and forecasting solutions to be very agile. Um, and we want to be able to connect um, and bring data in from a number of different sources and be able to share that out as we need to. Uh, we want to make sure that these solutions where we can automate calculations, so creating driver-based solutions, um, we'll talk about allocations, um, Kind of building these into the systems, doing these calculations automatically within the system, and then allowing users to have the ability to then update those adjustments. So they could update, you know, calculating drivers based on trends, uh, based on external sources or factors you've loaded in from another system, um, being able to adjust those, those drivers and then calculate your revenue and expense related, or calculating your revenue expense based on those drivers and then being able to adjust the plan. Um, and so, uh, you know, the so having a planning solution that allows you to do that is going to be very important important. We need to be able to access it from a number of different devices. Um, we want to support all the different methodologies. So um, there's, there, there is a movement for zero-based budgeting um, and starting with a clean slate and just, you know, not carrying over, um, you know, some of our, our forecasts or budgets just because that's the way we've always done it before. But really taking a look at um, your, your, your cost as usually um, where you're doing this from a, a clear perspective and what, what do we truly need to run and operate the business. And then taking advantage of new features, new technologies like the auto predict, uh, where again, the computer can kind of take over for us, run based on a series of models, do some of the statistical analysis and do math that I don't even know how to do, it can do that for me and then I can kind of pick and choose um, and update the constraints around that plan and then I can save it into various different versions. I want to make sure we have a solution that supports all of that. Uh, we need EPM to support the, the close and consolidation process um, and really accelerate this process. So I, I know, thankfully, it's it's been great to watch customers um, with HFM um, over the years and now with FCC really improve their close processes. Um, what I've seen is, again, they, they're, they're, their true consolidation process in HFM is great, but then uh, there's still, you know, all these Excel spreadsheets and Google calendars um, of managing the closed process. Um, and so there's still some room for improvement. And, and what we're seeing in the cloud technologies is features to be able to support the process from start to finish. Um, so really accelerate that. And again, we're starting to see automations with account reconciliation. Um, so removing some of those manual steps and manual activities that, that folks are doing. Profitability and cost management. So this is an important um, aspect of, of EPM and Hyperion um, that many customers haven't really embraced yet. Um, uh, you know, and some folks are doing this and using this, but I think there's there's a lot of opportunity for some of you guys um, to really understand your your true profitability. Um, and so what oftentimes happens is again, you know, there's a number of different. Um, levels of expense that are that are not tracked by your rev revenue facing um, data elements. So by customer, by product. Um, so having a solution that would support um, kind of a very transparent process of allocation so you can see um, and really understand, you know, if I'm a hospital, um, I, I come from a healthcare background, you know, if I understand what is what is it, what is the true cost? If I take all of my enterprise support costs, um, you know, to see a patient in the head and neck center, um, you know, and 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 how do we come up with that? What are the drivers? What methodology, you know, allocation methodology should we use? We need a solution to make that process easy. Um, it's got to be transparent um, and and be able, you know, have folks be able to understand. I just don't want to get, you know. $100,000 allocated to my department and expenses and have no idea where that's coming from. So we need to make sure that we've got kind of visibility into that. But then it helps us to, you know, really make um, decisions about when you see the, 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 the final cost, the fully allocated costs, um, make decisions about pricing levels and, and, and making sure that we're profitable where it makes sense. And if we're losing money, how can we fix that problem? Um, and again, in times of Corona, where should we be focusing your limited resources? So if you've got constraints, cost constraints, cash flow constraints, you know, you definitely want to be focusing on your profitable areas of your business or where you can make things more profitable. So you need to have that fully, fully um, allocated view of your data um, to be able to make those decisions. And I would add with profitability and cost is that this is a little bit further along the maturity curve. So what we see is that or at least what I saw when I was in services is that customers really needed to get their budgeting and forecasting processes tight and understood. They needed to really get their clothes down and, and efficient. You know, once those things are achieved, then 
this is where profitability and cost management really starts to come into play a lot more because at that point now I'm not, I've got time available to, to do that analysis. Well, I need better data, data to do that analysis and, and PCM is phenomenal for that. And, and, I, and I agree with you, that has definitely been the kind of the evolution. This was always, well, that's a nice to have, we're gonna do that in a later phase. But I think with coronavirus, I think it's changed the priority for this. And, and again, we've been really pushing customers that this is a tool that was gonna provide some insight that you never had before. Um, so we're challenging customers to, 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 to change that model because this could be you know, a life-saving tool you know, for a company to, to really understand you know, how, what's gonna be the best way for us to survive in this you know, unpredictable time frame. So then reporting and analysis. Um, so why can't I just report out of Excel? And hopefully everybody knows the answer to this, even though all of you guys are still doing some level of reporting in Excel, right? So report, you know, Excel is a workbook on somebody's, you know, file server. Maybe we've got it shared on a Google Drive. There's no security or limited security. We can't really run reports in batch. Um, errors, data integrity issues, um, you know, the it's, it's manual, so hopefully, I, I think all of us know the pain points of Excel, right? Um, and so where we wanna get to is a best practice reporting solution. Um, so where um, part of the reporting solution includes specialized reporting cues, you know, for analysis and reporting. So whether that's creating, you know, an, an AP or vendor cube, where um, if you need to then, you know, drill down into vendor level details, PEOs, looking at, you know, kind of purchase, uh, purchase, uh, spent and what do we have remaining, you know, oftentimes people kind of leave out like they're doing some manual reporting, IT supported reporting in their ERPs, but that would be a really easy kind of simple queue that can be built um, to meet a need. And then again, you can pull in data from other systems. Um, so again, specialized reporting cubes, wherever you, if you have a need for additional slicing and dicing, answering questions, and again, you wanna combine one or more sources for users to be able to consume that information. Uh, we've got great tools um, to be able to do that. And that's an important element uh, within Hyperion. We wanna have standardized reporting. So if it's a report that you run on a weekly monthly basis and you're refreshing with current data, refreshing for the next month, updating, that absolutely can be automized, uh, automated. Um, and so creating those in a standard system and then really empowering users to be self-service. Um, so again, we want folks to just be able to go get a report, um, go get a set of data that's been validated that we know is good um, and they can empower themselves to answer the questions that they need. And then again, having the ability to access it wherever we are at, um, whether it's if we're in the office or, you know, if we ever get back there or if it's from home um, or if it's like I am often doing, you know, in carpool, dropping off my kids or, you know, some other, you know, uh, life, daily life activity. We want to be able to get to information when we need to. The benefits of kind of this expanded access is, you know, cross-departmental uh, sharing of information. Everybody's looking at the same data. Um, really important when we talk about, you know, kind of business units, operational managers, speaking the same language, seeing the same data as the accounting and finance folks. Um, having a much deeper understanding of the data, um, you know, comes with kind of pulling it together and again, making it into a, a meaningful data set. Uh, being able to report on a number of different sources. Um, so pulling in Oracle data with non-Oracle data um, and making sure that we're updating it as frequently as possible um, to, to keep that timely information to users. And then again, back to, we talked about our data, data governance. We wanna have common meaningful structures um, that all users can, can see and report against. Um, so I do want to point out Hyperion is not just for finance, although um, finance is usually, uh, finance and accounting are usually the, the, the um, you know, the folks that are leading the charge, um, but there's a, a Hyperion uh, supports reporting analytics planning, forecasting uh, for customers outside of finance. So whether it's, uh, you know, your, your sales and operation planning uh, folks, it's your HR folks that is kind of wanting to do workforce people analysis, um, 
And, you know, if it's your, your sales and marketing team, um, I think we're actually working on a, a marketing campaign uh, reporting cube, you know, to help folks understand kind of the effectiveness of marketing campaigns. So um, Hyperion is not limited to the p &L. It is not limited to, you know, your balance sheet cash flow. While it does that very well, um, it can be expanded and used to really any type of numbers that you're wanting to slice and dice and understand to help you answer a question. So then what does it look like? Um, so where we are today, um, the Oracle EPM and analytic um, architecture, uh, you know, we have our different ERPs, our data warehouses, um, or maybe some point solutions. Um, we're getting that data. So then we have a, kind of a, a business process is how Oracle is, is framing these business processes to, to, to support the, the overall e, EPM experience, right? Which includes closing consolidation, forecasting, planning, um, profitability and costing, and then the overall reporting um, perspective. And then we wanna be able to, to consume that information in a bunch of different ways, whether it's a nicely formatted report that I click the button, it's a guided dashboard, again, another click the button experience, or it's in a data visualization capability self-service where I can create my own visualizations. We of course want to be able to access this in Excel because as much as we want those Excel workbooks to go away, we still love the Excel interface. Um, and so SmartView um, you know, is, is that tool to connect to any business process and be able to slice and dice um, the information to be able to enter plans. You can actually run consolidations. So if you want that Excel interface, that's available to you. And then ultimately, uh, the foundation for this, right, is, is your um, enterprise data management for your overall data governance and, and making sure you have clean data sets. Um, so, so using OneCloud, using data management to really make sure that kind of this, this integration process is very seamless. So the next few slides, I'm going to go through um, pretty quickly because I, I kind of talked to the elements of what they do, but I wanted you guys to just understand the business process name. So all everything that I'm going to talk about right now is part of the Oracle EPM cloud enterprise subscription. Um, and so what's great is it's one subscription to meet all of these different business processes that are part of EPM that are part of Hyperion. So we use Enterprise Data Management Cloud or EDM um, for that management um, of our dimensions, our hierarchies, mappings, business properties, um, and a business user graphical interface on the cloud. Um, we can build custom validations. Um, it already has system validations built in for us um, in many cases. Um, we can do quick comparisons. Again, we can map you know, multiple chart of accounts into a single chart of accounts and then export out those mappings for use in data integration. Um, so very powerful solution that's part of the, the Oracle EPM cloud. And again, which we kind of relate to Hyperion. Uh, planning cloud um, is the the best you know best practice. I think it's the number one in the Gartner. Um, Gartner's come out with some new grids uh, for the year, and I feel like Oracle's in the you know kind of leading corner um, for almost all of them. Um, but planning cloud, I think, is definitely the one, and this is a really powerful solution to meet all of your forecasting needs and, and all those requirements. If you remember my slide that had all the different uh, diagrams, planning cloud is your solution to, to meet those requirements. Um, we do Oracle does give us pre-built content, um, which is great, um, and it's it's built on best practices, um, proven you know, pre-built content that you can that you can use for your implementations. Um, you can pick and choose what you want to use. Um, you don't have to use all of it. You can just use some of it. There's a lot of ways to be creative um, in your application's design. Um, but thankfully, there's a whole bunch of stuff that Oracle's already created that we can just take advantage of. Strategic modeling is an element kind of within the planning cloud um, that allows and supports uh, long range planning, scenario modeling at an aggregate level, uh, mergers and acquisition modeling, um, again, which I oftentimes see, um, you know, customers playing uh, banks. Some, some, some big dollars to do some of that analysis where like if you've got EPM Cloud, you can do some of this all by yourself and not have to pay the bank. Uh, to do some of it, you're still probably gonna need their help in some areas, but it's a, a very powerful modeling tool at an aggregate level, definitely for the, the treasury finance um, strategy group. Um, it's a, it's, they definitely own the application, they own the models um, and can be off and running. So super powerful tool to help with scenario planning and strategic modeling. 
FCC is the closing consolidation um, solution. So this is where um, built on S space, newly re-architected from HFM. Um, and uh, really they've achieved um, all the parity items. You know, we, it, when it was first released, you know, again, we, we went through development cycles to get uh, to the point where now FCC really, um, for the most part is, is, is in parity with HFM and is a very powerful close and consolidation solution. Another advantage with FCC is um, Again, that some of the features like supplemental data manager, um, uh, account reconciliation, um, and then the task manager or close manager, all part of this EPM cloud subscription, where um, in previous on-prem world, those were kind of individual products, individual things that you had to purchase. Account reconciliation we've talked about. So doing um, you know, auto recs where you can, um, having alerting notifications, tracking the reconciliation process, the, the audit controls and the accountability all contained within a supported business process within the EPM cloud. PCM, this is where we're doing our allocations. This is where hopefully we're gaining some of those insights that you never really thought about or, or thought that's gonna to be too complex. It's gonna to be too hard to implement. Um, PCM is again, a business user interface to kind of create allocations, to find those allocation rules and then provide visibility um, into the overall solution, um, providing visibility, transparency into the allocation so you can understand and see and answer those questions. You know, my, my $100,000 that was allocated to me oh, okay, all right, well, I see, all right, this amount came from accounting, this came from IT, I can kind of see, and then this was the driver that was used. So as much as I don't want to accept that amount and have to kind of manage that from a profitability standpoint, I, I understand and I can see where it makes sense. Everything under the covers powered by S-Space um, for the most part. And again, if you are new to Hyperion, new to EPM um, and S-Space, S-Space is a multi-dimensional cube that is kind of under the covers and provides a whole host of benefits, um, which is why Oracle is using it and all, all of its different systems. Um, so it uh, is kind of this underlying cube that stores data so that we can slice and dice and report really fast. It has a very powerful calculation engine. It allows for granular security um, and definitely scalable, right? So large volumes of data um, and taking it and putting it into that meaningful format that we talked about so that it's easy to consume by users. And then of course we have smart view. Um, so smart views, the, um, you know, are kind of our pathway into EPM using Excel. Um, you also have PowerPoint and Word capabilities, but Excel is really kind of the primary place where we're ad hocing data. We can create reports if we want to. Um, we can enter forecast, run uh, forecast rules, perform consolidations. If I'm an administrator, I can even maintain dimensions if I wanted to within smart view. And then the narrative reporting. So this is that nicely formatted reporting option um, within the EPM cloud. However, it goes way beyond that. Um, so it allows us to take all of our different reporting packages that we're creating that oftentimes have a number of different authors that are contributing to different sections. And it brings that authoring process into um, a central repository that you have visibility into you know, who's contributing what, and you can manage the timelines and due dates. You can have reviewers and you can have folks that sign up and, and approve those reports. Um, it ensures a standard uh, a style template, um, whether it's Word uh, reporting packages you're developing or a PowerPoint reporting package. Um, so I know a lot of you guys are creating budget forecast slides. I see you guys doing it. Uh, narrative reporting is the solution to automate that process. And again, it can be refreshed as you, know, you get a last minute change. We need to update this particular driver, rerun your forecast, refresh your reporting package and then you're done where again that might take you two hours it may take you you know five minutes once you've got narrative reporting tied into the process uh, so definitely an important element of it and then I'm going to turn it over to Tony to take us home and talk about kind of the rest of the pieces and, and close it out sure thanks Tracy I'm going to go through all the animations there you go <laughs> appreciate it thank you <laughs> I've learned to just keep animation out of my slide decks as much as possible. Me so, too, me too. They sneak in and I'm like, who turned that on? Somebody turned it on and I didn't know. So Tracy said that this presentation was not my idea, but this presentation being put together is largely her. So thank you for that. Um, but you may have noticed as we talked about this, there's this kind of reoccurring word that kept coming up. Uh, you may not have picked up on it, but it's the idea of data. Right? Underneath all of this, data is, is the king here. It's, 
incredibly important to have good data, whether it's data coming in from other systems that you need. So it's actuals coming in from my general ledger, from my operating uh, systems, um, whether it's moving data between these different systems. So when I'm trying to, to bring something into profitability that may rely on something out of FCC or out of, uh, maybe I'm taking information out of my planning cloud and putting it into into PCM so that I can do my allocation process on there and then sending it back so that I can get those fully loaded um, views of, of a PL or my customer profitability, whatever the case might be. All of this is data, right? And so data gets there a lot of different ways, but a big portion of this is really integration, both inbound within the system and outbound. So you really need to think about integration as a discipline across your entire Hyperion program. Don't give it short shrift. Really think about how am I going to approach this? How am I going to get the data in? How am I going to move the data within the solution itself? And how do I send it back? So there's a variety of different ways to do this. And so what I've seen in, in my years in services is that a lot of times this wasn't really thought about. And so individual little solutions would be developed as opposed to taking a look at this holistically and understanding what am I trying to achieve here? And, and what is the data that's needed across the entire solution? So it's a bit of a caution, make sure you're doing that. And then at the end of that, once you, you figure out what is the best course here, ultimately you wanna automate that because these are non-value add tasks, loading data, moving data between systems. You wanna find as many ways as possible to actually automate that process. Right. So, uh, we've talked a lot about Hyperion here today and, and EPM. Um, so you might be asking yourself, well, I've heard this one cloud thing. Maybe I don't know what one cloud is. Maybe you do, but why are we talking about it here? Well, we think that it's important to, to think about one cloud as a potential in the, the overall EPM solution, because we think about it as best of breed. We do things in PCM because while you could do it with say planning cloud, or you could probably build it in FCC to some degree, right? It's not the place where you should be doing that. Well, it's the same thing around one cloud. There are a variety of tools across the Hyperion stack. You saw it on the last slide there, you know, that whole rainbow that went across there or, you know, speedometer, however you want to think about it. There's a variety of tools, but there aren't really many that give you the ability to do the integration, both inbound across and outbound. And so all those different things is something that OneCloud seeks to do and seeks to do in a way that you can manage it centrally and you don't have to worry about knowing how to code in order to do it. And so OneCloud has two products that, that provide this integration studio, which gives us the ability to connect to different systems. So whether they're on my on-premises systems, my general ledger, systems of record, other operational systems, cloud-based systems, uh, whether I'm connecting into something like Fusion GL, maybe I'm connecting into Salesforce because as Tracy said, Hyperion extends beyond just finance. So maybe I'm hooking into Salesforce to, to move some data. Maybe I'm hooking into um, Workday because I wanna get back my employee roster and I wanna support my workforce planning with that. So Integration Studio handles that connectivity and it does it in a way that we don't have to worry about writing code to do it. It's pre-built connectivity to over 60 different technologies. Well, then the other portion that's important here is, well, how do I harmonize that data? And that's where data prep comes in. This is where we do our mapping and manage that relationship between the data models of all of the different systems that we need to connect and making sure in support of that data governance process, we're building relationships that are easy to build, easy to maintain, and can be owned by the business. So, one of the, the tools that's out there that does some of this is, is cloud data management, right? But when we start thinking about our overall solution that some people have said, well, what about when I need to talk about loading data into a space 19 C or the legacy OAC, or maybe I have some things sitting on prem. And so we talk about one cloud in this construct because it allows us to have a comprehensive solution that, that crosses our entire EPM and BI stack. So talked a little bit about it. It's a question that comes up. 
I'm not saying anything bad about Oracle Cloud Data Management. I realize it's embedded in the product. You get it for free. Why would you pay for software um, that, that you get for free otherwise? But I get this question a lot, so we put it into the deck. Uh, why would you go with OneCloud over data management? Well, one is it's a no-code solution. You know, that, that, might sound, uh, that might sound like a lot of marketing work, but it's truly not. Uh, there is no Jython, there's no Groovy, there's no VB. There, it's quite literally a no-code solution is very much point, click, and drag. Uh, so I think that that's really important because if we think about one of the reasons Hyperion became and exists and has done so well is because it put the power into the hands of the business. We didn't have to rely on the IT team as much. We still partner with them and we still value what they do, but we don't necessarily want to be tethered to them. And that's because they're busy, right? And so as we're trying to adjust to what the, what's going on in the world and we're trying to make the systems work to whatever our new requirements are, we can't necessarily sit in a queue. So by having the ability to control our integrations, to connect into nearly 70 different technologies natively without having to write any code, that's pretty important. But another important differentiator here is that OneCloud is a very guided interface. It gives you basically breadcrumbs. Hey, fill in this field, but it's not prescriptive. We can build those the way, build our integrations the way we need them to be built. So we don't have to adapt our process to the technology, the technology adapts to us. And so that's something I heard um, in the community over the years is FDMEE data management, they were really good at loading data in that was actuals based. But as soon as we started to get into bigger data sets, um, we could do it, we could, certainly could, but there, there started to be a, a little bit of a make it fit the technology as opposed to making the technology fit us. Um, and so part of that, they, the outcome of that is that our performance is really astounding. Uh, I, I recently did a proof of concept for a customer converting their FDME e maps into OneCloud and uh, took a process for a quarter of a million records that runs in a, a little over seven minutes and brought it down to 19 seconds. So pretty, pretty good pickup. And when you start thinking about extrapolating that over a number of time periods, uh, that seven minutes down to 19 might not sound all that that interesting, but when you say, okay, I'm gonna load 12 periods of data, or maybe I'm gonna load 60 periods of data because I need five years because I'm gonna support kind of a strategic outlook, it starts to become really important. So again, it, back to the concept of best of breed, you can certainly use data management. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm not saying you shouldn't think about it, but I'm also saying you should maybe think about one cloud as well. All right. So just wrapping up here, because I know we're running short on time, uh, but EPM Enterprise Cloud, you know, we've talked about, or Tracy brought this up a bit earlier. There's basically two ways that you can get EPM Cloud. There's Standard Edition and Enterprise Edition. Enterprise Edition really is the kitchen sink. Give us everything um, and allow us to build solutions as they need for your business. So. You don't have to think about, well, I only bought the, the planning side of the house. Nope, We've, with Enterprise Cloud, you get everything and then you deploy it as you need it. And you can deploy it in a, in a stepped fashion too. So it's, it doesn't have to be a big bang, but having all the tools available to you at your disposal to, to meet your needs is an important one. All right. So cloud benefits, you know, just Tracy, you can go through this, but I mean, you can see here, there, there's a lot of different things here, right? So the security, the IT expense, all that stuff just kind of gets collapsed and just gets put into this bundle of, I've got the cloud. I don't have to worry about all these different things. It's all pretty much managed by Oracle, right? So uh, the cloud has won. So what does this mean to us as we, as we, you know, take a step back and kind of look at this. It's our future and, and where we need to get to the, the ability to better understand what's going on with our business and respond to business events. Uh, I, I think I heard Opal refer to this as a black swan event yesterday uh, on the panel that we were on. What's the next black swan event and how are we going to prepare for that faster and better? Well, across this entire solution, this whole platform, there's a lot that can be done. 
And I think that the biggest thing, Tracy, if you go to the next slide, is around the predict here. Um, uh, I got a little ahead of myself. Okay. Intelligent. You're right. Yes. All right. So intelligent performance management, this idea that machine learning is built into the product. You know, we talked about this a bit yesterday on, on the Ask the Experts panel. Do I think it's going to change in how people behave in the next 12 months? Probably not. But I also think about it in terms of the, the EPM cloud as it started out in 2014 with planning and budgeting cloud service. Right? There was a little bit of an adoption. We learned a lot of lessons. Oracle learned a lot of lessons there. And I think what we'll tend to see over time, over the next three, five, seven years, is that intelligent performance management allows us to, to leverage these solutions even further and be prepared for that next black swan event. So if you could go back one slide, Tracy. So again, why do you need EPM? Don't do this in your ledger. Don't try to, to use your ERP to do what, what EPM Cloud does. Right? This is purpose-built to allow the business to, uh, to address their needs. The ERP is not done for that. It's transaction-based. So I'd like to leave you with that closing thought. And we manage time pretty well, considering you both of us are pretty verbose. Yes. So, when I send, yeah, when I send some of the product slides to Tony, he was like, oh, do you think we can get through that? I'm like, no, 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 I'll cover it at high level. <laughs> I'll go through. So, so we did, and I did go through some of those, those elements pretty quickly. So do you guys have any questions? Anything on the question chat section? I don't see anything over here, which means we either did a great job or we were really boring. Well, it's also day four of, you know, oh, how many hours a day of Zoom? So I'm not sure where all you guys are, but, uh, you know, it's been an awesome conference and a lot of good information, um, you know, but it is a lot of Zoom as well. Uh, there the is one, one question. question. Yeah. yeah. Is so there is, an, go ahead, I'll let you take this one. Is there a financial close management type capability in financial close and consolidation cloud? Uh, the answer is yes, that is part of the, the capability of FCC. Um, I know in discussions with Oracle uh, that there is a, a, an idea to actually pull that out of FCC to, so that you can use it across all of your different business processes that are supported by EPM Cloud. So today, currently it's in FCC, but I would imagine over time, they're gonna to look to, to really take that closed management and really just make it task management. And well, and I, I think they, they've actually renamed it task manager. And while you are correct, it's part of FCC. Like if you go and create an FCC application that closed management then, but now with the Oracle EPM enterprise subscription, you can create, I mean, you could, whether it's in your, your, your instance where you have FCC running, or maybe you just set up another instance that you're just purely using, you know, kind of for that task manager efforts, um, you could create task lists for, for planning activities for reporting and analysis. So while it kind of right now resides in there, um, you still could use it across the business processes, which is great. Um, I, I will look forward to maybe when they include some planning, there's some planning specific uh, functionality features mm -hmm. that I would like to get in there. But as far as managing your overall process, they, they renamed it task manager for, for just that reason. And even though it's not actually in your planning pod, you could still use it um, in a diff in, within the instance, uh, you know, across the business processes. All right, great. Well, I think we've got everything. And I know Francisco is going to be on this line. So enjoy his his chat. Um, I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll have lots of good things to say. And uh, Tracy and I are presenting on another track, uh, which I'm really excited for this next one coming up, uh, how to ensure a successful project. So I think- we'll share uh, all of the stuff not to do so you don't right. fail. Great. Thanks, Thank everybody. you so much, Tracy and Tony. You, you guys were awesome. Appreciate it.